So I want to show you one of the most popular functions in Excel, which is the if function. Just so you know, I'm here on Windows at the moment, but I'm going to show you how this works on the Mac. But basically, when you see how it works on Windows, it works pretty much exactly the same way. The function is the same. It's how you insert the function in, which is slightly different, although I'm pretty sure you'd work it out even if you'd just seen this. And I'll show you at the end how you insert the function in from the Mac into here. And there is actually a chapter for that. So down at the bottom, you'll see on this video, there are chapter markers that are in the description as well. And you can just jump forward to where how to insert on the Mac. But it's here that I'm going to show you how it works even once you've inserted it. So you may need to come back to this section. So I've got two sheets here, one on grades. So I've got some students that have got grades here and anyone that's got 50 or above is going to get a pass. And if they didn't, they're going to get a fail. Over here, I've got commission, and here it's got some commissions here. Anything under 100,000 is no commission, over 100,000, 5%, and 250,000, 10%. So I'm going to show you how to do that. This one's a bit different because one, it's a calculation, and I'm also going to show you something called nesting, so you can have an if within an if. So let's just go back to the grades and start there. So to do this, you can go into your insert function. I'm on the formulas tab here. Insert function is a very popular place for doing these. It comes up quite often under recently used because as I said, it is popular and there it is right at the top. As it happens, I just used it just before actually recording this. And you could also look under logical here and it's got the if function. Now, it doesn't matter what ribbon you're on, there's always the insert function here on the formula bar, which is the same as this button. So you know what? I'm just going to click on this one here. Let's just click on insert function. This is where it slightly differs on the Mac, but it doesn't matter too much. You'll work it out anyway. And as I said, towards the end, you'll see how I do it on the Mac. So over here, I'm going to click on if you can see it is right here. It is in this category logical. So I could just go to most recently used and it is there as well. Over here, it gives me a quick idea of the function. This works for any function you've got here. It says if there's a logical test, we're going to look at that. And the value if that test is true and the value if it is false. So there are three arguments for this and it tells you a bit here. Whenever you need to know more on a function, you can see there's got this help on this function right here. So I could double click on the if or just click on OK and it starts inserting it for me. So the thing I do need to include, if you've done functions before, if it's in bold, you do have to fill it in. If it isn't in bold, you don't need to do that. So let's just do this. The logical test, I want it to be 50 or greater. So let's just click here on B4 and it fills that in. Now, if I do greater than 50, the thing that's going to say is that what I'm looking at is that it's not going to include 50. So if the person got 50, that would be considered a fail. If I wanted to make it include 50, which you kind of would do if you're giving someone a pass, perhaps you need the greater than and equal. Now you can use less than that's this symbol. OK, but we're going to use the greater than for this test. You might want to think, well, what if it's not equal? Well, that's the greater than and the less than together. But we're doing the greater than and equal, and it has to be this way around. Don't do equal and greater. It has to be greater and then equal. If it's true, they're going to get a pass. And I'm just going to type that in. And it automatically, when I tab or click onto the next little field here, it's automatically put the quotes in. And this one, I'm just going to make this a fail. And if I click outside of that, it's put the fail in. Now, the thing is, is because I'm on this cell here, it is actually looking at this result here. And over here, it's got the formula result for this particular cell is pass. So you kind of know that it's working, that you've done the right thing. I did mention about the nest thing, and it does say here you can have up to seven if functions in there. So that could be significant if you've got more than seven different tests to do, and there's a way around that. And I've actually got a tutorial coming very soon. By the time you watch it, that may already be there on how to do a custom function, which would allow you to do loads and give you greater flexibility as well. When it's done, I'll put the link for it down in the description below. 
So let's click on OK. There we go. We've got our pass there. I can now copy this down. I'm going to do that by using my autofill to drag down. That's using the bottom right hand corner to do that. Now let's see what happens if we change this to 49 and it automatically becomes a fail. Sorry about that. So there you go. So that is how you can use the if function to do something like a pass or fail like that. OK, let's look at how you use a commission and therefore you're doing a calculation. So as you can see, it can return text or it can return a number as well. So we're going to start off by looking at if they get less than 100,000, they get no commission. And if they get greater than or equal to 100,000, they get 5% commission. And then we're going to amend it to add in that extra bit of if they get over 250,000. OK, so let's put the function in. Let's click on insert function here. Let's click on OK. Let's put the test in. So that is in here. B3 is greater than and equal to 1. 100,000, very new, look like 10,000 there. So you've got to be careful with those. The value, if it's true, well, I'm going to take that 150,000 in B3 and I'm going to multiply it by 5%. So some of you who are good at maths would have said, well, you could have just done 0.05 and yes, I could have. But I want to show you as well that you can just use the percent sign there as well. The value of false, it's not going to do a calculation. It's just going to return zero. So let's click on OK. And now I just need to copy that down. I'm going to use the autofill, which, you know, I could click and drag down. Or whilst I've got the mouse over that bottom right hand corner, I can actually just double click it and it will copy it down, matching the range next to it. And you can see Larry here got less than 100,000. He got 90,000 and he got zero. What if he got 120,000? Oh, that's a lot better. Let's put him back where he should be. OK, now I want to change this because I want to make it that people get more commission if they get over 250,000. So this person here, Mary, has got more. Let's just make a note of that. She's got 13,750. I could click in the formula bar here and just type it in. But actually, that might be a little bit untidy. You can now imagine if you had seven of these, this might start to get untidy. So let's just escape from that. And let me just click on the insert function whilst I've got this one selected. And hey presto, it comes up filling in all the blanks for me. So it's here. If the value is true, I now want to do the if function again. Now I can't use this little insert function. I need to know a little bit about using the if function. So now I'm just going to type in if, put in a bracket, and now I'm going to test it by, I'm going to type in B3 is greater than or equal to 250, one, two, three. Then a comma. That's the bit that's showing me what to do if it's true. That's not correct. I want B3 times 10%. Then a comma, and I'm just going to go to the end here and put a bracket in. So this is a little if statement, little if function inside the whole if. And you can see it here. It's got if I've got my test. Is it greater than or equal to 250,000? If it is, this is the true bit. It multiplies it by 10%. If it's not, then it does it as 5%. And I could do nesting within the false section. I could put another nest inside here. And as you can see, it can start to get a little bit untidy, as I mentioned before. Let's click on OK. Right, so let's keep an eye on this Mary one here and just make sure that all of these are still the same. So let's click and drag that down. There you go. She's got 10%. I think we can see that 10% is a relatively easy calculation to do in our head. It is uh, 27,500. So there you go. And if she went down to 249,000, there you go, working perfectly. And just to check that this is doing the right thing. Always good to check these things, don't you think? There we go. So we can undo that. So that goes back to where we were before. Right, and we can undo that one. So there you are. That's the nesting. And you can see it in the formula bar here, what is happening here in that it's now building this up. And it's quite a good idea if you do want to amend it. 
you might just go into your insert function here, which takes you back to the dialog box, which kind of makes it a little bit easier to do. So that's how you can do functions within Excel. The thing you want to know if you're using a Mac is where is it slightly different? The whole way that if function works of having your test, having the true bit and having the false bit are the same. So that's the most key bit. So let's have a quick look at how you do this on a Mac. Okay, so over here in the Mac, it's the same spreadsheet that I'm using, although it doesn't have the functions in here now. And what I'm gonna do is at the top here where it says formulas, I'm going to click there. And you can see it looks pretty much the same here. And I've also got my insert function here. You can see that I've got my logical here and I've got my most recently used and I can click on either insert function here and just like on the Windows version, insert function works the same here as well. So there it is, it's the same as that button. And again, it appears on every tab uh, that you've got over here in the ribbon. So let's just click on that. And you'll notice that the difference is it doesn't come up as a dialog box in the middle. It comes up as the formula builder on the side here. And you can see it's got the if function and you could scroll all the way through it. You can click on search here. You could type in if, if that's what you want to do. And it has narrowed it down. You could do this, have done the same actually, that search. It's on the dialog box in the Windows version as well. So let's just clear that. So there's if, and I can just go to insert function. When I do, again, rather than being the box in the middle, it's on the side here. So I can go to here and uh, click on B4 and say that that is greater than or equal to 50. I can then do my pass and fail just like I did before. So over here in this version, it actually says done. And when I do that, it's inserted it in here. It stays visible on the side here until you close it by clicking on that little cross in the top right hand corner. Let's just copy that down. So if I wanted to, I could amend it just by changing it in here. And then I would have to copy it down. So as you can see, it works the same kind of way. It's just a little bit different in the sense that it's appearing on the right hand side. Now you know why I said you would have found it. It would have just popped up on the side there and I'm sure you would have figured it out. The rest of how the if works is exactly the same, the nesting and everything like that. So as I said, I'm creating a tutorial, should be there in a few days on how to do a custom function, which you might find really useful. So that allows you to do more nesting and more clever things as well. So do check out all my other videos that I've got. I've got lots of Excel videos and also Word, PowerPoint and Access as well, as well as video and photography. If you do like this, please click on like and subscribe if you want to keep up to date with more things that I'm recording here that you might find useful. Thanks for watching.